Good morning. Um, today we'll be talking about variables, operators, and pop-up boxes. We'll learn how to name and declare variables, how to assign values to the variables, and how to convert between different uh, data types. The data types in JavaScript and displaying dialog boxes. This is part of our lecture five. So on our next lecture will be on lecture six, which is controlling flow with conditions and loops. So before we start, I would like to take your back and do a recap. Okay, now what is JavaScript? JavaScript is a scripting language used to create and control dynamic uh, website content. It's anything that moves, refreshes, or otherwise changes on your screen without requiring you to manually reload a page. Uh, we have different features, the likes of animated graphics on your website, photo slides, autocomplete, text suggestions, and interactive forms. What is JavaScript used for? We covered this a bit um, on our previous lectures, but here is a quick list of the main things JavaScript is used for. It's used for adding interactive to the website. If you want a website to be more than a static page of text, you will need to do something JavaScript meaning you need to add some JavaScript on your page. Developing a mobile application, so you can use JavaScript to develop the mobile application, not only for the websites. Creating web browser-based games, so you can start uh, building the web browser games using a JavaScript. Back-end web development, those people who deal with the back-end web development, they use JavaScript, and it's mostly used on the front-end of the things but it's versatile enough scripting language to be used on the back-end infrastructure too. How does JavaScript work? JavaScript is either embedded in your web page, we have already done, or else it is included in a .js file. So we remember, you remember whereby we did the external linking. JavaScript is also e a client language rather than a server-side language which is a fancy way of saying that it gets downloaded to the site visitors computer then processed so let me just make a simple example we have ajax which is asynchronous javascript and xml ajax is a new technique for creating better uh, faster and more interactive web applications because now I'm just trying to um, give you an intro to Ajax. We are not going to do Ajax now, but just an introduction because it includes a JavaScript also. So Ajax is not a single technology, but rather a group of technologies makes use of XML, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Ajax allows web pages to be updated asynchronously by exchanging data with a web server behind the scene. This means that it is possible to update parts of the web page without reloading uh, the whole the whole page. Um, this is how Ajax works. One, you have your browser here, so you provided an event. So this is an event or case. Create an XML HTTP request object. Send HTTP requests that is on the internet, when you are connected to the internet, to the server. So when the server receives a HTTP request, it starts processing the request and create a response and send data back to the browser. Then it takes it back. So process the browser, process the returned data using JavaScript and update the page content. That is what is happening when you are using um, Ajax. I hope that is clear. So let's take a look at the script tag. JavaScript programs can be inserted almost anywhere into an HTML document using the script tag. We have our HTML document here. This is our body. 
then this is our paragraph now we insert uh, our script text here we open them and we close them then we give an alert message which will just print on the screen hello world that is an alert message <clears throat> modern markup the script tag has few attributes that are really used nowadays but can still be found in old code the type attribute which is script type is equals to this the old html standard html4 required a script to have a type usually it was type is equals to text.javascript it is not required anymore also the modern html standard totally changed the meaning of this attribute now it can be used for script modules but that's an advanced topic we'll talk about modules in another part of the tutorial so it means that when we continue we'll start talking about all those things so the language attribute we also had this one the language attribute we have the type attribute we have the language attribute this attribute was meant to show the language of the script this attribute no longer makes sense because javascript is a default language there is no need to use it is that clear so we also have comments before and after the scripts you will find all these things so in really asian books and guides you may find comments inside the script text like this that will be the comment this is the this is the comment this string is used in mod is not used in modern javascript this comments hide javascript code from old browsers that didn't know how to process the script tag since browser related in the last 15 years don't have this issue and this kind of comment can help to identify a really old block so you have to take note of that because when you open different javascript project when you are dealing with the project javascript project you will see all this and you have to know the importance for that if we have a lot of javascript code we can put into separate files that is script files attached to html with src attribute that is src script src then you give the path where you have located your file which is uh, script.js so this is external linking it means that it can put um, your javascript file separately from the html file that you have then you use src then you provide the path then you get where exactly you have uh, put um, that file here is path to script just is an absolute path to the script from the site root one can also provide an alternative path from the current page for instance that is src is equals to script.js sometimes you can put them in the same um, folder would mean a file script is in the current folder so if you don't want to provide this path exactly where you have located this javascript file you can put it in the same folder with your html file and then you just say src or j uh, script.js that means that um this file that js file it's it's, it's inside and it is inside the the current folder that you are using at the time so this is how you provide we can give a full url as well for instance maybe you have stored your file somewhere um let's say on the internet so you want to use that file you provide the url um where your file is being stored to attach several scripts use multiple text text so we have script script one dot js and we have script two dot js meaning you have multiple um um, java.js files which have been stored somewhere as a rule only the simplest scripts are put in html into html so remember um, if you have a lot of scripts um, it's, it's more important to create um, a separate files more complex one reside in a separate files that's what it means the benefit of separate file is that the browser will download it and store it in its um kitchen that is one of the reasons other pages that references the same script will take it from the kitchen instead of downloading it so 
the file is actually downloaded only once that reduces traffic and makes page faster so you get to understand that if you have your page and you provide the external um .js file so the moment you start loading your website meaning the script will be downloaded and be put in the kitchen so you know what is the importance of kitchen in kitchen you store the things that uh, which are used um, more often if you have your file in you always access that file or use that file more often so you put that file inside the catcher even the computer uses catcher to access the file that which are used more often that is the importance of that if SRC is set the scripting content is ignored a single script tag can't have both the SRC attribute code inside that is script src.js then alert the content is ignored because src is set we must choose either an external script src or a regular script with um with the code the example above can split into two scripts to work so if you look at this the content here which is alert one the content is being ignored because you have used uh, the src so you can decide to do it in different ways and say script alert without putting this src then can be able to provide the the message so we are going to talk about variables most of the time a javascript application needs to work with information here are the two examples an online shop the information might include goods being sold and a shopping cart a chat application the information might include users messages and much more variables are used to store this information what is a variable a variable is a name storage for data we can use variable to store goodies visitors and other data so to create a variable in javascript we use the let keyword the statement below creates in other words declares a variable with the name message so that is let message that is our variable name now we can put some data into it by using the assignment operator so we have let message which is our variable name then we assign this variable name a hello message which will store this string the string is now saved in the memory area associated with the variable we can access it using the variable name so we can just say let then message hello and then i let the message so this will show the variable um content which is hello on the screen to be concise we can combine the variables declaration and assignment into a single line that is possible so we here we are going to say let message that is variable declaration then assign um, hello message to this variable that is why they are saying that we can um, put them in a single line then we can ask alert this message then the, the message that will display on the screen is hello we can also declare uh, multiple variables in one line so we can say let user is equals to john and age is equals to 25 then message is equals to hello so that might seem shorter but we don't recommend it for the sake of better readability please use a single line per variable so you know you, you can do it there is no problem with that but for 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 your program to be able so that we can be able to read it um um more easily provide readability so it's very important because it will also provide you you will, you will be able to have a very clean um, piece of code so that's why you are being advised to declare them separately so i can have let user equals to john let age assign to 25 let message send to hello so 
here again you can say let users join comma age 25 like this it's, it's okay it's fine also yeah but be careful that here we we provide the comma then we hit enter so that you can have a different separate line lines that's how it works so now you get let's let's understand um why do we use led instead of vr so use for i know most of you you are used to var in older scripts you may also find another keyword vr instead of let so var message equals to hello the var keyword is almost the same as let it also declares a variable but in a slightly different old school way there are sub differences between led and var but they do not matter for us yet we will cover them in detail in chapter um the old var so that means you can either use var or led but nowadays um to 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 declare your variables it's more advisable to use to use led we can easily cross the real analogy we can easily cross the concept of variable if we imagine it as a box for data with a unique named sticker on it for instance the variable message can be imagined as a box labeled message with the value in it we can put any value in the box we can also change it as many times as we want so what they are trying to do here they are trying to give you them the like um the the, the general overview um what's the importance of the variables so you know inside um your variable you can store a value so when you look at the box you will realize that the the main cover of the box is the message but inside that box you will find that we have hello so we can also change it as many times as we want so we can have our variable name let message then assign the value to that variable which is hello then the very same value can assign it another value that is um world so the value has changed so when you alert the message then you realize that our new um value ekahara variable um, the message is world when the value is changed the old data is removed from the variable we can also declare two variables and copy data from one into another it's also possible so we have little hello then we store hello world message then we let message that is another variable then we copy hello world from the hello into the message so we say message and then we assign it to hello what is hello hello it's hello world which has stored this um, message so when you alert hello you will see this hello world and then when you alert message you will also see hello world that is copying data um, from one variable into another variable so declaring a variable twice triggers an error a variable should not be should be declared only once a repeated declaration of the same variable is an error so you cannot say let message this then again say let message that this is going to give you a syntax error telling you that a uh, message has already been declared meaning we already have this variable declared so we should declare a variable once then refer to it without let I, I i believe i hope this is clear um naming variables that is another important topic there are two limitations on variable names in javascript the name must contain only letters digits or the symbols which is that symbol and um that underscore the first character must not be a digit so since you have been doing other programming you know it's not advisable when you 
um, declare your variables, you should provide a letter, the first letter as uh, as a number. Um, so, for example, let username, let test123, those names are valid. When the names contains multiple words, a camel case is commonly used. That is, words go one after another. Each word except the first starting with a capital letter. So that is camel casing. So we have user. You can see that name. It's another word. It has capital letter. So with my very low name, that is another example that you can see. What's interesting, the dollar sign and the underscore can also be used in names. They are usually regularly symbols, just like letters, without any special meaning so these names are valid let dollar equals to one it let variables with the name dollar let underscore equals to two now variable with the same name so a let dollar this and this then three will be displayed <laughs> this dollar which is one plus this um underscore that is which is two then the answer will be three so examples of incorrect variables so you cannot say let one a you cannot start with a digit let my with hyphens in between my name hyphens but they are not allowed let that be clear so let test prompt test um so for prompts to look good we recommend always providing the second um, argument. Let's pass this one. We'll talk about prompt and confirm. So now let's talk about the confirm, the syntax. Result is equals to confirm then question. The function confirm shows a model window with a question and two buttons okay and cancel when you use confirm you will realize that it will provide um, a model window in only okay or cancel the result is true if okay is pressed and false otherwise so we are here let is boss equals to confirm are you sure are you the boss so alert is boss if true so it means that true if you press ok that is the question true if you press ok but false if you press cancel so we have alert that which shows the message then we have prompt shows a message asking the user to input text it returns the text or if cancels button is says if cancel button or escape is clicked then we get now so let's talk about these three um, browser specific functions and show you how how they work like I have explained here how the confirm works, then we have alert, then we have prompt, and we have um, a confirm. So let's demonstrate how this works. So we have our confirm function here, whereby we say let is boss is equals to confirm. Are you the boss? Then alert is boss. So let's check how it works. Remember, if you press okay it will return true but if you press cancel then that is where it will return false so let's see how that is confirmed okay let me come here save it here it's confirmed let's play this so you can see it gives the pop-up message because we have used alert so now you can see how alert works 
then it says are you the boss then you press ok then you see it returns um true okay let's refresh then are you the boss then you cancel then you can see it returns false that is how confirm works so alert um how it looks like so we have alert here alert we just display the message remember when we say we can um declare the variable our variables as there is no problem with that dollar sign and uh, underscore then give it a value then let's run that and see that is alert so now you can see the answer is three that is um, two plus one which is three we also have um, the third one which is prompt um, when you use prompt you get the input from the user so now you can see it's test prompt so when you look at that this is our prompt so we let test is equals to prompt test that's where we gather the user from there from the input from the from the user this is how the prompt works and we cancel so the confirm we talked about it this cancel we talked about it then the prompt we talked about it so we demonstrated three of them so now you understand how they can be used so let's continue and talk about data types different data types in javascript so we have there are eight basic data types in javascript here we will cover them in general and the next chapter we'll talk about each of them in detail so as we will cover them all then we'll try to explain how they work we can put any type in a variable for example a variable can at one moment be a string then store a number let a message then message be a string contains hello world so you know where we use this um inverted commas to show that this is um, a string then with the same variable we can give it numbers so there is no problem with that programming language that allows such things such as javascript are called dynamically typed meaning that there exist data types but variables are not bound to any of the types they, they are dynamic type so it means that even if we can give it to any boolean what but they are not bound to the type that you have provided you can give any type they are dynamically typed so we have numbers so we let n equals to one to three and assign n to 112.345 the number type represents both integer and floating numbers there are many operations for numbers e.g multiplication division addition subtraction and so on besides regular numbers there are so-called special numeric values which also belong to this data type infinity negative infinity and none infinity represent the mathematically mathematical infinity it is a special value that is greater than any number we can get it as a result of division by zero so a let one divide by zero it's infinity let infinity so we have none also NAN represent a computational error. It is a result of an incorrect or undefined mathematical operation, for instance. So now we have um, a string, then you divide a string with an integer. So such a division is erroneous. None is a sticky, and any further operation on none returns none. So you need to understand you are trying to uh, do a computation. Um, or applying the mathematical operation on different data types a string and the integer so if there is none somewhere in the mathematical expression it propagates to the whole results we also have big int in javascript number type cannot represent integer values larger than 2 to the power 
53 then minus 1 that's this number you will want to screen or less than um, negative 253 minus 1 for negatives it's technical limitation caused by the internal representation inside the computer for most people that's quite enough but sometimes we need really big numbers e.g. for cryptography the moment you're doing cryptography you will be dealing with these numbers whatsoever the work it's, it's all about the security so combination of those numbers uh, or microsecond precision time steps. Big in type was recently added to the language to represent integers of arbitrary length. A big int value is created by appending n to the end of an integer. So we have constant big int, then this so many numbers. Then you put n in the end. That's how you represent the big int. Big in num in numbers are really needed. We don't cover them here, but devoted them um, a separate chapter. Okay. Now we have a string. A string in JavaScript must be surrounded by quotes. Remember, I talked about that. So let string hello. Then we use this quotes to represent to show that this is a string. Let string to a single line. So it means that you can use this one with double quotes or single quotes. Ah, okay, there is no problem with that. So we can also have let phrase can embed another this dollar sign, the string, and this. So in JavaScript, there are three types of quotes: double quotes, single quotes, back ticks quotes. Also, double and single quotes are simple quotes. There are practically no difference between them in JavaScript. I know living in most programming languages, there is no difference between the two. Backticks are extended functionality codes. They allow us to embed variables and expressions into a stream by wrapping them in this dollar sign and the curly braces, for example. So we have let John. So we alert hello then we added this one then name inside then hello john so now you get to understand if you want to you have your variable then um you want to provide the message to your variable like hello john hello tab hello tabang then you use this um back ticks for that providing the curly braces and the dollar sign then you can put your variable name which is this one inside so now you get to understand what is the difference so also you can do this again you have the results so you want to give these expressions here you pull you use the very same big ticks uh, back ticks then you provide an expression one plus two is equal to three the result is three so that's how you do that so it means there is no problem with that now if you want to show the output the expressions inside this is evaluated and the result becomes a part of the string we can put anything in there a variable like name or arithmetical expression like one plus two or something more complex please note that this can only be done in back ticks that is very important now you understand double quotes single quotes back ticks how they can be used so let's talk about a boolean and logical types the boolean types has only two values true and false true one for zero this type is commonly used to store yes or no values true means yes correct and false means no incorrect for instance let name field checked equals to true yes name field is checked so it's yes if the name is still let age field checked false no if age field is not checked let is greater is equals to four is greater than one a let is greater the comparison result is yes so let's see how this will work it simple means that it has to give us true if four is greater than um okay let's use this 
box for this and see then let it create a culture true if this is this and that and that and that you use this one prompt um just this one from 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 not this one oh it's true it's true if four is greater than one that's why we get this true here i don't know if you can state that what about if we say four is greater than ten save and refresh false it's false if four is not greater than ten so we also have the null value the special null values does not belong to any of the types described above it forms a separate type of its own which contains only the null value so let h is equals to none in javascript null is not a reference to any non-existing object or null pointer like some other languages it's just a special value which represents nothing empty or value is unknown so with the quote above it means the age is unknown we also have undefined value the special value undefined also stands apart it makes a type of its own just like now the meaning of undefined value is not assigned if a variable is declared but not assigned the value its value is undefined so now you get to understand the difference between um, null and undefined so technically it is possible to explicitly assign undivided to a variable let age is equal to 100 age undefined then you will get the message undefined we also have type of operator the type of operator returns the type of an argument it's useful when you want to process values of different types differently or just to do a quick check so it supports two forms of syntax as an operator type of x and as a function type of x but it can have a, um, those parentheses so in other words it works with parentheses or without them the result is the same the call of type of x returns a string with the type name so here type of undefined is undefined type of zero is a number type of 10 n remember it's a big int because we said that with um a big int we end um our number with n so type of true it's boolean type of um um foo is a string type of this is, is a simple type of simple type of maths object type of null type of alert is a function so we already have explained those um basic data types in javascript number for numbers of any kind um integer floating integers are limited to this plus or minus this big innings for integer numbers of arbitrary length string for strings a string may have zero or more characters there is no separate single character type boolean true or false null for unknown values undefined for unassigned values object for more complex data structures and simple for unique identifiers so now we are going to talk about type conventions most of the time operators and functions automatically convert the values given to them to the right type for example alert automatically converts any value to a string to show it mathematical operations convert values to numbers there are also cases where we need to explicitly convert the value to the expected type not talking about objects yet in this chapter we don't cover objects for now we will just be talking about primitives later after we learn about this object hello objects when time comes so string confession now we are going to convert a string string conversions happens when we need a string form of a value for example a let value does it to show the value we can also call a stream value function to convert a value to a string so let a value equals to true which is a boolean and then type of value let's see 
we take this and then now we get to see half um lead is greater hey what is this now jesus Christ. why this in disappointment Probably getting kick off the other dealers. The level does one other output. Yes, I'm um, let's save and we check, we check prompters. So this okay. Le Shogomezo Yapile, it was, um, we said lead value equals to true and a lead type of value. Type of value is what? It's Boolean. That's why we get the message Boolean. We also have the second one. We check Rona. Um, value has been assigned to a string value. Then a lead type of value. Now it has tend to be a string. Now value is, value is a string value. So that's how it works so let's continue so meaning we have converted um, a boolean value to a string value so we had a value as a boolean which is true and we checked type of value then we found that it's boolean then we took the very same value then assigned a string value to it then we check type of a value now it has turned to a string string conversion is mostly obvious a false becomes false now it becomes now so let's continue numeric conversion numeric conversion happens in mathematical functions and expressions automatically get this statement wrong numeric conversions happens in mathematical functions and expressions automatically for example when division by when division is applied to nine numbers let's take a look at this these are the stream six because we have used this um inverted commas then we have two also it's a string so if we use this division sign between the two strings then it will convert this to an integer meaning the value that we're going to get here it's going to be three that is going to be six divided by two so that means that we have converted a string to an integer that is strings are converted to numbers is that clear we can use number value function to explicitly convert a value to a number so let's come here again and check let's string one two three i let the type of this that is a string so let num is equals to number so that is num function number function then string then this becomes one two three meaning we converted this string into a number using the number function so then we alert type of num that is going to be a number that is an explicit conversion is usually required when we read a value from a stream based source like a text form but express expect a number to be entered so look at this you can have your file and the file has a set of strings then you want to read that file and take some values from that file then those files do some um, calculations or mathematical apply some mathematical operations on those number within that file so with that it simply means that this this, this is going to be a, 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 a file that is full of strings then you convert that strings into um um use um a number function to 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 convert that string into numbers so that it can be able to um 
provide a mathematical operations on them yes so that's how you can do that so here if the string is not valid the result of such confession is none for instance let age is equals to number then we have um, equals to number and arbitrary string so these are a list of um, characters inside this function so what is going to happen let alert the age so we are going to get none conversion field it means that it, it failed to convert because there are no no numbers within that string so we have learned how to do um conversion let's continue we also have boolean conversion boolean conversion is the simplest one it happens in logical operations um the the conversion rule values that are intuitively empty like zero and empty string null undivided and none become false other values becomes true for instance alert boolean one is true alert boolean zero is false alert boolean this is true alert boolean this is false so that is uh, that is the boolean um co conversion we have reached the end of our lecture today so let's meet on the next lecture where we will be talking about the loops thank you very much